My name's Aaron Ralston. My parents are down on Larry Ralston of Englewood, Colorado. Whoever finds this, please make an attempt to get it to them. Be sure of it. I would appreciate it. It's April 26th, 2003. A man named Aaron Ralston is canyoneering in Blue John Canyon, Utah. As an experienced outdoorsman, Aaron believed that this was just another trail he knew inside and out. That all changed when, by a stroke of terrible luck, he stepped on a loose rock and fell into the canyon, trapping him in the middle of the desert with more than 50 miles between him and civilization. Ralston's harrowing experience begins when he arrives at the Canyonlands National Park on April 25th, just a day before the incident. He came by a day early to explore the ravines. These ravines could at times be 30 meters deep and less than one meter wide. Before he left, he didn't tell anyone where he was going or how long he'd be gone because he didn't feel as though he had a need to. He thought the hike would be an easy one and he'd be back within the day. The night before the hike, Ralston parks his car here and then slept in it for the night so that he could wake up the next day and immediately start hiking. By 9.15 the next morning, Ralston began biking to the Blue John Canyon, one of the places he was planning to explore. He took only enough food and water to last him a few hours because he was not expecting this to be a long trip, but rather planning on returning to his truck later that night. When he reached the canyon's opening, he locked his bike and started making his way across on foot. At around 2.45, only five hours after he left, Ralston's hike changed entirely. During his walk, he stepped on a loose boulder and fell down to the floor of the canyon, which was only about a two-foot drop in falling, but Ralston had gotten his arm stuck between an 800-pound boulder and the wall of the canyon. In a panic, Ralston tried pulling his arm out, but with no success. After somewhat calming down, Ralston laid out his options. First, he had no way of signaling for help. He was 30 meters below surface level and 20 miles to the nearest paved road. He hadn't told anyone where he was going either. It would take at least a few days for people to notice that he was missing. So Ralston's focus was on surviving until that time so that someone could find him. Second, he barely had bought any food. He had two burritos, one bottle of water, and some small candy bars. Third was the issue of getting his arm out. There was only a few ways to free his arm. He could either chip away at the boulder using the pocket knife that he had brought with him, attempt to move the 800 pound boulder on his own, or lastly, cut his arm off. Ralston spent the whole night chipping away at the boulder. Little by little, he did his best to cut away the rock that was trapping his arm. After around 15 hours of chipping away at it, he realized that there was no way he could cut enough rock to free his arm. With this realization, Ralston turned his attention to the second option, moving the boulder off of his arm. He made a makeshift pulley system using a rope that he had brought with him, but with only the strength of his one free arm against an 800 pound boulder, the situation did not change and he remained trapped. Ralston's physical health had also began to deteriorate, as his body temperature became unpredictable due to dehydration. I have very, very little water. My body's having difficulty controlling its temperature. I'm in deep stuff. This is when Ralston started to lose hope. It's pretty much suicide. It's uh, four hours from here to my vehicle. He'd been running low on food and water and started recording videos on his camcorder. Ralston had the idea of cutting his arm off for a few hours now, so it seemed like that was his last option. Climbing is probably the impossible with one hand. The blood loss and my dehydration, I think, um, are ruling that out. And I think I would die if I cut my arm. The next day, after considerable thought, Ralston laid out the tools that he would need to cut his arm off. He took out one of the two knives from his dollar store pocket knife and tried to break the skin. As he says in the video he made using his camcorder, he could barely get any blood to draw. Jesus, I tried, I tried cutting my arm off. 
I couldn't even barely break the skin with this stupid knife. I tried a couple different blades, and all I did was just mark myself up. I can barely even get any blood to draw. After another night of cold winds, anxiety, fear, and panic, Ralston decided to get serious about cutting his arm, and instead of trying to cut in a sawing motion, he decided to stab it. Once he realized that the knife he was using was too dull to cut through the bone of his arm, he decided to put the whole amputation thing on hold. Ralston reasoned that he would officially go missing at midday tomorrow, and he believed he wouldn't make it until someone found him. On Wednesday, Ralston really started to confront the possibility of death. He recorded himself saying goodbye to his family and friends and saying his last will and testament. He claims that the majority of the day was spent daydreaming about his life. He recalls that sometimes his family and friends would appear in front of him in the canyon, and he even recalls having a vision about his future child. On Thursday, it had been five days since Ralston initially fell into the canyon and he had resorted to drinking his own urine due to the lack of water. He began thinking of his escape route again and realized that he didn't have to cut through his bones with a dull knife that he had. Instead, he found that the boulder was positioned so that Ralston could break the bones in his arm himself and then cut through everything else. That's exactly what he did. It, it, it came to me, this, this epiphany that I could break that I could break the bones because my arm was caught so tightly that I could torque myself. He would have to snap both of the bones in his arm to make it work. It took him over an hour to finish the job. Finally, after Ralston had cut through his entire arm, including arteries, nerves, and tendons, he staggered backwards, hitting the wall behind him. This was a pivotal moment for him, as he described the moment as a rebirth, but with the mind of a grown man. And then, boom, and I wasn't even attached anymore, and I fell down like this, and I, 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 I was free. Now that Ralston had freed himself from the boulder, he was tasked with hiking out of the canyon and walking all the way back to his truck, some eight miles from his current location. With one hand losing blood, Ralston pulled himself out of the canyon, climbed down a 65-foot cliff, and walked six miles until a family who was hiking found him and notified authorities. Medics reached Ralston by helicopter four hours after the amputation. If they had waited any longer, Ralston would have died due to blood loss. After one of the most harrowing experiences known to man, Aaron Ralston can now live his life as he intended. He is now a motivational speaker and an engineer, and he's also written an autobiography called Between a Rock and a Hard Place. His story has also sparked interest around the world, making his book a bestseller and even adapting it to a hit film called 127 Hours.